Hi friends and followers, it's Vic from App Forever Scrapping and today I'm sharing with you a process video for pear tree cut files. Now Marie has um, kindly asked me to be a guest designer for the month of August for her and um, she's launching her new business in August and it's got loads and loads of fabulous cut files on, all really original and this is one of the ones that I decided to work with. I just loved the big sunshine in the middle of the word hot. I thought that was a really clever idea. So I've gone about cutting the cut file as a great big huge title. That was my main thought process behind this layout. And I've used some of the, um, I think it's Maggie Holmes Sweet Story Collection. This sheet of paper here has got loads and loads of hot air balloons on and that was going to be fabulous for the photograph that I had. A while back, I think it was a year or so ago, we'd met friends for a picnic for the day and just as we were about to leave, a hot air balloon company arrived to set their hot air balloon up and take people up into the sky and my youngest had never seen a hot air balloon close up before and she was absolutely amazed by how big it was and she looked so dinky next to it and I managed to capture a few photographs and this one was my favourite one of me and her with the balloon in the background. So the hot, instead of it being a hot summary title, formed part of my hot air balloon title. The original cut file that I cut, I decided was too big for the layout. It was swamping the page too much. So I will use that for another layout at some point. I just made it a little bit smaller in the Silhouette um, Studio and pre-cut it. And it works much better with the photograph now that I've got of me and my daughter. And I've set it on that yellow background to start with because that's the colour that I want to back my cut file with. And I wasn't sure whether I was going to leave it all yellow or just cut uh, back that cut file with it. So I've added some more dimension to the layout there by using my Sizzix machine, dusting it off and cutting some clouds out. And then changed my mind to um, use like a blue paper background instead. So as you can see, I'm just backing my cut file here. Now, the way I've done that is I've opened up the file in the Silhouette Studio and I've selected the cut file and right clicked on my mouse and then I've released the compound path. This then allows me to move the outer edge line of that cut file away from all the intricate detail that's in the middle of it. And then I just simply used that outer line of the cut file to cut my pattern paper. That way I didn't have to do any trimming really for the backing of the cut file because it fitted perfectly. The only bits that you see me doing there with my um, my scalpel blade there is just the tiny bits between the sun rays and the H and the T that just needed a little trim. But that was all I did. So when I back my cut files, I always find it's best to use a fine tip nozzle glue. Now I'm using Cosmic Shimmer glue here. That's always my go-to glue for any of my scrapbook layouts that I do but it's perfect for tricky, intricate little jobs like this. Now, I always find if you get a little bit too much of a splodge of glue, when you stick that cut file down onto your backing, you sometimes get the glue oozing out from under the edges of that cut file. So as you saw there, I literally just used my finger and dabbed those little blobs of glue that were too, too thick and heavy there and big with my finger. And that just takes the excess away a little bit and prevents you getting the, the glue splodge from underneath the cut file showing on your backing. So super happy now with that hot. I think it looks fantastic. It's standing out against my background paper. Now that was a sheet of Bloom Street from Paige Evans collection. And I love the feel of it, the watercolory look of it. It looked like the sky and clouds to me and the greenery of the ground below. So I felt that tied in nicer than using just that whole big yellow sheet of paper. So 
So I'm adding to my title and my cut file now. So the hook is the main part of my title and underneath with some teal acetate letters, I'm just adding the word air balloon. And it took me a while to find them. They were all stuck together. There's so many of them, but I just love the color of those. So I just felt they went perfectly. And as you'll see later on, I've changed the A in the balloon to one of the fussy cut, fussy cut hot air balloons from the paper just to add a little bit of a playful element to my layout. So just deciding where I'd like everything now. And I think it's coming together for me really nicely. It's got a nice flow through it and I love all those little mini dinky hot air balloons. I think they're super cute. So I wanted to add something behind my photograph and that cut file just to bring them off the layout a little bit more. So what I'm doing now is I'm adding some clear gesso to that background sheet of paper. Now the reason I'm doing this is because the paper itself is not designed for mixed media to be popped on it. So by adding this layer of clear gesso on, which I'm just scraping on with just like a little scraper tool, um, it's actually um, a Pampered Chef <laughs> cooking scraper but um, from the kitchen. So you don't always need to have the correct scrap scrapbooking crafty tools to do the jobs that you need to do. Um, it's nice if you do, but if you don't, it's not the end of the world. There's always a way around it. So by adding that layer, I can then add mixed media to that background paper without it absorbing into the paper itself and causing it to buckle a lot. It just gives me an area where I can move the paints around a little bit more to how I want it and um, keep the page as flat as possible. So once the clear gesso is dried, I've added some white gesso on top. Now the reason I did this, and I'm, you can see I'm applying this one with my finger rather than scraping it across, I wanted it to have a lot of uh, um, a much softer feel to it to try and make it sort of merge into that background paper a bit more and be a bit more um, soft and pillowy like the clouds in the sky would be. So it's all dried. I've checked where my mixed media is going to go by keep popping my cut file over that area just to check I've done the area that I want. And now I'm adding the mixed media to my layout. Now I'm using a variety of mixed media here and starting off with some Distress Oxide Ink Spray. And I've literally just sprayed that directly onto my gessoed area and then using some water on a paintbrush to move it around the page a bit just so it sort of merges into the background a bit more and is a bit softer around the edges. So spritzing with a little bit more water there. And then I wanted to match those um, teal acetate alphabets that I'd use. So I'm now using some acrylic paint which is similar in colour and just moving it around the little the layout a little bit. I don't want it to be really in your face, I want it to be more subtle. Now what, don't be afraid of adding mixed media to your layouts. You can buy proper cardstock for this which is a lot heavier and able to deal with the amount of water that that you pop on your layouts or you can gesso it like I have here. It always looks like a hot mess to start with. As you can see here, it, it looks like a child's done it really. <laughs> there's, no, there's no rhyme or reason and you never know what you're gonna get each time you do it. But by the time you've added your photograph and your embellishments on top of it, it hides most of that hot mess. Um, so yes. So I wanted to add a bit more heat and depth to behind that hot cut file just to make it pop more off the layout there. So I'm adding some orange gelato, which I'm simply just drawing onto the gessoed area and then watering down with my paintbrush. So there we go, it's all dry now and I'm happy with the end result. And as you can see, as it's dried, it's got a lot lighter as well. So it's there and it's doing its job. It's, you know, it's, it's adding that pop of colour behind the cut file for me to bring that off the background paper even more. And I'm happy with that now. So it's really just a case now of sticking my bits onto my page. Some of the clouds I've stuck directly onto the background paper and then others 
I've used some sticky back foam just to raise it up off the layout a little bit. And I've done that with the word hot and with my photograph as well. That's all raised up on foam pads just to bring it off the page because that's what the, my layout is about at the end of the day, the photograph and, um, and that gorgeous cut file. I really wanted those to shine on my layout. Now, excuse the lighting here, it's get, it was getting a little bit dark and I was desperate to try and get um, everything done and I don't have a proper crafting studio, so I have tried to alter the light, but I do apologise for the change in lighting. So I'm at, just adding now some Distress Paint white splatters on my background because I felt it needed a little bit more around the edges. And I just like the, the effect that white paint splatters adds to your layouts. So a bit of wound up thread, some yellow thread to match my cut file there to add some more dimension to my layout. Sorry, that was the dog shaking her head in the background, if you can hear her. <laughs> I'm not having much luck with recording this. My first recording had some kind of glitch in it. So, yeah, this is this is another attempt. And it's not going too well with the dog in the background. <laughs> Never mind. Some teal thread there to tie in where the air balloon title is. I'm just tucking it behind my cut file and my photograph there with some tweezers. And I'm using some of the Paige Evans Go Scenic Route chipboard stickers. There are some lovely little hearts in there that uh, the colours coordinated really nicely with the layout. And we had such a lovely time and my daughter really enjoyed watching this. So I thought they tied in really, really nicely with the page. And just a case now really of me embellishing this page. So I'm adding my journaling to the side. And then I've also used some Vicky Bootin chipboard stickers, word stickers from the, I think it was the Wildflower and Honey collection as well. Words that went perfectly with how I was feeling for the day. Adding my title, my, my title, not my title, my date there onto one of the hot air balloons because I wasn't sure where else I wanted to put it. I didn't want too much black around the layout because I didn't want to make it too heavy. Some of the puffy dots from the Hey Hello collection by Pebbles Inc. I'm really happy with all the little embellishments and how it's sort of tying the page together there, but I wasn't um, particularly happy still with my background and still felt it needed a bit more. So what I'm using here is some normal texture paste and just adding a tiny bit of Vicky Bootin yellow texture paste, which I think is called Pina Colada. So by doing that and just mixing a little bit in, it's making it a lighter yellow because I didn't want it too in your face and to detract from the photograph and the cut file that I'd used. And I'm just using one of her star stencils here just to add a little bit more detail. Now, I know the photograph was taken during the day, but you find stars in the sky. So I just thought, do you know what? Hey, let's go with it. It really doesn't matter that it's a daytime photo and you only see the stars at night time. And I was really pleased, actually, with how that turned out. It really added to it. So I hope you've enjoyed my process video. This has been Vic, guest designing for Pear Tree Cut Files. I'll leave the link in the bio below. Thank you. Bye.